Hey, what's up? How's it going? Thank you for clicking on my 1 to 99 construction guide. I'm going to make sure by the end of the guide, you know everything you need to know about construction because there was a whole bunch of new player on house updates that happened a couple months ago. And most new players returning to OSRS probably have no idea about any of these updates. If you are curious in any other 99s and you do happen to enjoy this video, I did just post every single 99 and feel free to subscribe and smash that like button for me. It means a lot. And every one of these guides I actually try to include a quest list and I would highly recommend you doing this first off. I can see some good quests on here especially Fremenic Isles which is 5k construction XP. That's a lot but you will actually need 20 construction to begin the quest. So moving on to house locations there's actually seven different locations. You might want to pick the best one for you. I know Remington is a big one same with Yanil but you can actually unlock you know teleport to house and so your house location shouldn't matter too much for training. I've seen a lot of people actually have their house in Relica because there's the Slayer cave out there, kind of in that direction, and there's actually Dagonoth Kings and Rock Crabs. So, you know, it's a good location to kind of get it all. But definitely go what's best for you. Even Taverly, that could be amazing if you're actually trying to open like a whole bunch of crystal keys or you actually have that, that tree right there. You're trying to do some farming. So, you know, it all depends. Alright, so moving on to servants, you can actually hire your servant in North Artie, and they're very cheap. It literally costs, you know, 10k for the highest level, 5k for the butler, and uh, you will actually have to pay them continuously while you train. Like, if you're gonna, you know, have them fetch planks for you, it's probably gonna cost you 10k to 5k every 5 to 10 runs. But it is well worth it. We can see the higher tier butlers actually hold like 20 plus planks, and, you know, it's gonna save you a lot of time banking. Some items you'll need will actually be a saw a hammer, planks, nails, and a lot of gold to actually create your rooms. And I will get on to pluses and bonuses later, but you could actually do the Eyes of Glorify quest to get the Crystal Saw, which is a hidden plus five construction boost, I do believe. A really valuable thing you can learn is actually understanding how construction totally works with the planks. It's all based on how many planks you do use, because every single plank is going to give you the same XP. If I were to make like a teak armchair with four planks, it would be, you know, exactly half as something with eight. So yeah, the type and the amount of planks is all that matters versus XP. And, you know, obviously nails and all that stuff, it just doesn't matter. So now moving on to XP per plank, it's actually 29 XP per the regular, 60 XP each on the oak, 90 XP each on the teak, and 140 each on the mahogany. There's over 15 different rooms, and it's going to take me, you know, 10 minutes just to cover each one, but I will touch upon a few notable ones, and if you have any, you know, further questions, feel free to ask me in the comments section, I'll definitely get back at you. Moving on to the different rooms, there's over 15, and it would take me, you know, 10 minutes just to cover each one, but I will touch upon a few notable ones. So the kitchen actually provides free tea, the dining room has a bell which you can actually you know contact and instantly pull your uh, servant to help you. The workshop has an armor stand kit, it's basically the same as uh, Bob and Lumbridge for repairing like barrels and whatnot but it is a little bit cheaper. And the combat room actually has a max hit dummy which could be pretty fun if you get a new weapon you know go slash it up see what you can hit. Now in the quest hall you can actually have a mounted glory which will give you unlimited charges. I probably used mine like 25,000 times. It actually has a possibility to make a staircase and you can go down and then build a dungeon from there. And of course the chapel holds the iconic gilded altar which is one of the best ways to train prayer. I would definitely suggest go checking out my prayer guide because there is a few other ways and you could save yourself like 50 mil training prayer. Go check it out. And of course you got portal chambers. It's actually three different portals per room and you do have to charge it with like 100 law runes, it's not that big of a deal at all, and it probably won't even cost you like 30k, plus the amount of times you're going to use it, and the benefits of having it, you know, doing clue scrolls, all that stuff. Okay, I'm not a big gardening guy, but I think this is pretty cool, they actually upgraded the regular garden to now having a superior garden as well, and you can fit an actual spirit tree in there, and a fairy ring, will the obelisk, a rejuvenation pool, which I will cover later, this thing is so good, you guys have to get it if you don't have it yet. And finally, the achievement gallery, which actually holds unlimited jewelry, you know, teleports, dual rings, um, games necklace, all that good stuff, rings of wealth as well, so you can teleport straight to the Grand Exchange. And the room actually contains a spellbook altar, which you can go from Lunar, Ancients, and back to regulars again. It's pretty cool. Alright, so the last thing before we jump into the guide is the boost, and that's uh, the cup of teas. It gives you one or two boosts depending on your construction level. You can actually get this in the larder i believe in the kitchen there's actually the crystal saw i said it was five earlier it's a three boost and then there's actually the spicy orange stew which is five if you guys did the recipe for disaster evil dave part you would know about that 
Also, just letting you guys know I'm doing a giveaway with every single one of these 99s. In this video, I'm going to be giving away like 3,000 plus mahogany planks. I may even add on some more. To enter the giveaway, just like the video, be subscribed if you're not, and comment your RSN, plus even comment your favorite 99. Good luck. Alright, so from level 1 to level 4, you're going to be wanting to make regular chairs. It's going to take you about 1 minute, and you're going to be wanting to make them in the parlor room. Don't forget the nails. I'd recommend using bronze. You could use like iron. It really doesn't matter. 2 planks, 2 nails. Next up, four to nine wooden bookcases. Gonna take you about two minutes. Made in the parlor room as well. Don't forget nails, four planks. Moving on to wooden larders at level 9 to 22, making these larders should still take you under 10 minutes. You'll need 8 planks and you'll make them in the kitchen. You'll be making oak dining tables from 22 to 33. You don't need nails anymore. It's going to take 4 planks per. And at level 31, you could actually make carved oak tables, which is 6 planks and more XP of course. Moving on back to the kitchen, from level 33 to 52, you're going to be wanting to make oak larders. This is an insanely quick method, 150k XP an hour, only at level 33. It will take 8 oak planks to make this though, which is a bit expensive, and you're still going to need 220 larders all the way to 52. If you haven't already, teleport to Artie, go north a bit, and go hire a butler, they're extremely cheap, I've already covered them. I would say that past level 50, butlers are almost needed, it's going to speed up your XP quite a bit and just make it you know, a lot less tedious. Moving on to one of the best methods, mahogany tables at 52. You could in theory make these all the way to 99, but they are very expensive. I do believe it's actually the most expensive method because mahogany planks are like 2k plus right now. You're going to want to head over to the dining room and use 6 mahogany planks to make this table. It's roughly 750k XP an hour once you get in the groove. I would suggest zooming in on your camera. It's going to take you nearly 16,000 mahogany tables to get to 99. Man, that's, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of wood chop. Although making mahogany tables is the quickest method in the game, it's so expensive, I would only do this till 74. So moving on to our last method, oak dungeon doors at 74. To make a dungeon, first off, you'll actually have to construct a quest hall, and then a set of stairs, and then you can build it, obviously going downhill on the staircase. Alright, so compared to mahogany tables getting 750k XP, these oak dungeon doors are going to get you 450k, but you know, it's going to save you so much money, and I personally would do this all the way to 99, I think I did do it until like 80 plus. It's going to take you 10 oak planks per dungeon door, that's why a butler is like extremely needed, because you're going to make two of them and then have to teleport again. Now before the video ends, I do want to cover a few more things that could be pretty useful to you guys. So first off, they've actually added a couple more teleports to the teleport uh, portal chambers, which are quite useful. I can see the fishing guild on there, amazing for fishing and clue scrolls. There's also the lunar isle teleport, amazing for Suqua, slayer tasks, and you know, training runecrafting, questing, switching your prayer book, all that type of stuff. And at the bottom, they've actually added a 45 wilderness teleport. This is a huge spot for multi PKing. A lot of people, um, you know, go out there to fight, do wars, huge clan battles, or maybe you even want to make some gold and charge glories into sixes instead of fours at that fountain out there, which uh, can only be done in the wilderness.
One last thing to cover is the armor stand and the painting stand found in the workshop. You can actually, you know, repair all of your Barrow's armor in this workshop instead of going to Bob and paying a little bit more. On top of that, you could rebuild it and turn it into a painting stand, get your sigil from the King and Fally, and there's so many different like colors of shields, and a lot of clans use it for peaking. There's actually banners as well, along with the shields and full helms. You can paint what is it, a steel full helm or a rune full helm. If you're looking for some swag, you have found it. We're gonna take a stroll and do an OSRS cribs with some people that actually have 99 construction. These houses look amazing, so much better than they did, you know, five years ago. If you're actually coming back from maybe OSRS mobile, or you're just a new player trying to train your account up, and just look at these houses, they look amazing. They added over 10 new teleport portals along with a scrying pool. Let's say one of them's in the wildy. I can look through it without actually having to go into the portal and possibly get killed. They've also included an adventure log which you can actually check all the KC of every single boss you've killed and uh, some other various things. It's really cool and it looks pretty badass. Within the same room they've actually included an altar which you can change all of your spell books and a jewelry case which you can teleport you know to the games necklace everything you need in one stand it's really efficient and they even have a little case which you can actually um, buy jars of certain bosses or get them yourself from a PVM drop and put them in there and you know you can brag to your friends how rich you are or you know the boss you've actually killed at level 85 you can actually add a fairy ring to your house and you could get it at 77 with an orange stew I believe and a uh, crystal saw which is, which is really helpful that's literally seven levels that you don't have to get probably cost you 10 to 15 mil and of course they've recently added the wilderness obelisk to your house which is really cool you know if you're a pk or doing clue scrolls you can teleport instantly to the wilderness from doing your fairy ring or you know whatever it may be but yeah guys i'm gonna be wrapping it up there hopefully you did enjoy the video make sure you throw a like if you haven't subscribe i'll be posting every single 99 and also guys check out sears village an amazing runescape merch site and in a couple months it'll probably be even more like jam-packed with artwork and more uh, merchandise and stuff but yeah guys if you do want to help out the channel you found this video helpful check it out but yeah have a good one guys